What's up YouTube? My name is Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper. Today I am here with Java and Kirby, the gremlins. Um, these are my two Quaker parrots, also known as monk parakeets. Java is molting for the first time. Kirby is learning his first words, and they're both growing, mentally and physically, at a really astounding pace. So even if they are little gremlins, it only makes sense to provide these birds with the most mentally enriching environment we can. That's why they get lots of time to scream and fly around the room and do all of their parody things. But it's also why I have redecorated their cage with all sorts of cool new stuff that we're going to go over and we're going to watch them check it out for the very first time. So, without any further ado, let's do a parrot cage tour. My life is a bit of a mess, but I like it that way. Between juggling school, work, dozens of animals, and a constant drive to explore, things can get pretty hectic. But one thing always stays the same. A burning passion for wildlife and a desire to preserve the biodiversity of our world through public education, conservation, and animal care. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. All right, so we just barely managed. I've gotten both of the parrots back into their cage, and it is full of new, colorful, scary things. Quaker parrots have a natural inclination to be afraid of new things, so uh, hopefully all of the new, colorful, shiny stuff doesn't freak them out too much. While they figure this new stuff out, let's go over what exactly goes into their new cage. So this is my bird tower. I have my Quakers up top, and then down below, I have a number of my Chinese button quail. Java and Kirby are from the Austin Wildlife Rescue. They are feral Quaker parrots from the colony established in Austin, Texas. So the Quakers in Austin create gigantic nests on telephone poles, power lines, all sorts of things that are really problematic for the local electric companies. As such, nests used to be knocked down pretty indiscriminately. But now, the electric companies partner with Austin Wildlife Rescue to take in the baby birds and find them new homes. So that's how I got Java and Kirby, and why their label says they are from Austin Wildlife Rescue. Their enclosure is a pretty good size for two birds. It's three feet long, 18 inches deep, and about four feet tall. It has one main large door for access, which they are very good at escaping from when it's open. And then they have four of these front doors and two of these little side doors. Every single small door is clipped shut because they are very smart. They know how to open all of them. And if I give them the chance, they will. Seeing as I have three cats and one giant lizard, it's not a good idea. One of the handiest features of their cage is down here. Uh, their litter tray comes out for easy cleaning. I just cleaned it. You can see they've already pooped on it a number of times. They have a very fast metabolism. Um, and I have spilled a little bit of their water dish on here, but that dries up pretty fast. So the litter tray, which I just put paper towels over, uh, slides out like that, and so does the bottom screen, just like this. Seeing as I have stuff resting on top of that, I don't want to move it out, but there it is. On top of their enclosure is an exterior perch. This is where they hang out most of the time, when they're out of their cage, flying around the room, and when they're not chewing on my ceiling fan. Over the back of the cage, I have a blanket. This is just to provide some extra shelter and security for them. I also have a heat lamp back here, just a standard incandescent bulb, and a UVB lamp, specifically designed for birds. This is a ZooMed brand lamp. It extends all the way down to the floor as a normal lamp would so that it can actually hang over the top of the cage. This is just as essential for birds as it is for reptiles because it mimics natural sunlight, it helps with their physical health, their feather growth, and it increases their spectrum of visible color indoors. Now since we have talked about all the external features of the cage, uh, we're going to try to get in there and talk about what they've got going on inside. This is their water dish. This is their food dish. Both are stainless steel. Those are pretty self-explanatory. I keep them right underneath these front-facing doors for easy refilling, and the birds have a blast shaking the doors themselves. As Kirby will so politely demonstrate. I should mention also that my birds are getting this rowdy bush maintenance diet as their primary pellet food. They get a big scoop of this in the morning as their breakfast, and then in the evening, 
they get this Supreme Fruit Blend flavor. Uh, it's much more bright, much more colorful. Uh, I think it makes a suitable dinner slash dessert. So they get the wholesome, nutritious stuff in the morning, and then they get the treat around bedtime. This Supreme Pure Fun Mix has a lot of seeds in it, which are very exciting for them, but not the best in terms of diet. So they get this stuff as treats during training. Within this enclosure are all manners of perches and toys, all things designed to keep these birds mentally stimulated, active, and healthy. They're a little bit wary right now, as I said, because they are afraid of new things, and there are a lot of new things for them to process in this enclosure right now. Hidden in the back of their enclosure is one of their newest additions. It is a plush tent designed specifically for birds. This is their new bedroom. They haven't tried it out yet. I'm hopeful that they'll use it and have a good time with it. But it is just large enough for both of them to fit inside and have their wings touching the sides. Uh, it should be nice and cozy and snug for them. I really just hope that they don't poop in it. Running along the back of their enclosure is their main perch. It's a braided rope, it stretches all the way across, and it gives them the ability to walk all the way from one end of the enclosure to the other. It makes things easy for them. Hanging in the center is a very similar item, one of the new things that they got just minutes ago. It's the same concept, but it hangs from the ceiling, and it has a little bell on the end. Hopefully this springy perch will serve the same function as the rope perch in the back, just on a vertical axis as opposed to a horizontal one. I'm going to regret opening this because they're going to fly out right away, but I've got to do it. Here they come. They were being really bitey earlier. So inside the cage they have six other perches. This is a concrete petty perch. It's smooth on top, rough on the bottom, and it helps them file down their nails. It's all one piece, it's molded in concrete, so there's nothing that can flake off and get into their digestive tract. This is the perch that gives them access to their water bowl. Down on the left is its counterpart. This is a Pacific perch. It's made of ground calcium. This is another perch that they can file down their nails on. It's a lot rougher than their other perches. When you're choosing your perches, you want to have a lot of variability. You want perches of all different textures and all different sizes, so long as they can comfortably sit on top. So in addition to our concrete and calcium perches and our ropes, uh, we have two of these dowels, which are nothing special, they just provide a little extra maneuverability, and two of these manzanita branches. One of them sits on the bottom of the cage, acting a little bit like a tree, and the other one gives them access to their food dish. Right smack dab in the middle of the cage, they have this rope ladder. Uh, this is also pretty new. It's not brand new, but they've been getting a lot of use out of it already. It, again, provides vertical access like this spring, and it lets them get right up to the front of the cage when they want to be let out. Java has arrived to visit. He just wants to be on my shoulder. He does not want to contribute to the video at all. So what's left after the perches, the food dishes, all of that stuff are the toys. They have toys that are just meant to be messed with and chewed on, like this pinata. It's braided, it's meant to be unraveled and chewed on, and eventually discarded. Um, it's not a permanent toy, it just gives them something to destroy, so that they're not destroying the other accoutrements in their cage. This is one of their older chew toys. Um, it's made of a bunch of different pieces of wood, things that they can use to satisfy their need to chew and destroy without injuring themselves. This is their third equally old pinata. It used to have a ton of stuff on it, now it is just this, like, corn husk material. On the floor of the cage they have this PVC tube. It's just meant to be a little tunnel that they can explore. Up high in the cage, this is one of their favorites. This is just a little rubber ball. It's almost like a dog toy, and it has a bell inside. Very exciting. Next to that is our braided rope toy. This is another thing that they can chew on. They're not necessarily supposed to pull this one apart, but it gives them something to work on. And then brand new to the right of all these toys is this bright and shiny number, fresh from Amazon.com. And this one is called Wiggles and Wafers, on account of both the Wiggles and the Wafers. This is sort of a combination chew on and destroy and just mess with toy. Hopefully it's bright and shiny, keeps them occupied, uh, and they don't hurt themselves with anything on it. But that just about does it for the toys, perches, etc. inside of their enclosure. There's one more thing up here. This is their calcium supplement. It is called Zoomed's Banquet Cuddlebone. 
They've been chewing on it quite a bit, as you can see. It's basically just a flavored block of cuddle bone and calcium dust. Now, before I let you guys watch these guys explore all of their new stuff, uh, I gotta say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, a comment, uh, or hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Feel free to stick around to the outro to see other videos I've uploaded recently. And as always, have a good one.